In our next example, we're going to have a little bit more of a realistic scenario here. Let's say you're driving a car that's 1,500 kilograms. It has 100 horsepower of power output from the engine. The engine is about 25% efficient, meaning only 25% of that is actually used to, uh, to drive up the hill. The rest is lost by wind resistance, friction, and so forth. And uh, let's say the hill has an angle of 4 degrees, which is about 7%. How fast can this car drive up that hill? Hmm. So again, we can think of power as being the increase in energy, which in this case would be the increase in potential energy, or at least the rate at which we can increase potential energy. So we're going to have to know what the delta H delta T is equal to. And realizing, of course, that velocity is equal to um, delta X delta T along the hypotenuse. And so we can then say that the relation between delta H delta T and delta X delta T, which is, of course, velocity, and the angle can be found using the sine, so that the sine of the angle theta is the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And that means that the opposite side is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of theta. And, of course, the opposite side is delta H delta T which is equal to the hypotenuse, which is the velocity, delta x delta t, times the sine of theta. And of course, this is what we're looking for. Now, why did we do all that? That's because the definition for power is equal to work over time, or we could say that's equal to the change in energy, divided by how much time that takes. And of course, in this case, the change in energy is going to be the change in potential energy, so the change in mgh over the time elapsed. And so in this case, the work done on that car is simply to gain altitude. Remember, when the car is driving at constant speed up the hill, there's no energy required to keep the car going at a constant speed. That's Newton's first law, but energy is required for the car to gain potential energy. And that's where the power consumption is from. Since mg is a constant, we can move that out. So we can write this as mg times the change in h over the change in time. And then, of course, we realize that this here is equal to this, which is equal to V sine theta, which means that the power required to drive up the hill is going to be equal to mg, and instead of delta H delta T, we write V sine theta. Okay, now we've done that, but we still haven't taken care of the efficiency yet. Notice that only 25% of the power, power output of the engine is usable. So, that means we have to take that into account. We actually have to multiply that it's only 25% efficient, so we have to multiply the efficiency times the total power, out, power output of the engine so that we only get the realistic power output of the engine, the one that we can use where all the friction and wind resistance is taken away. So now we have to solve this for V, so I'm going to divide both sides by mg and sine theta and turn the equation around, so we have V is equal to the left side, E times P, divided by mg and divided by the sine of theta. So now we have efficiency of 25%, 0.25, times the power, 100 horsepower. Of course, horsepower is not a standard unit, so we have to convert that to watts. And so the conversion for that would be 746 watts per one horsepower. And divide the whole thing by the mass, 1,500 kilograms, times G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times the sine of the angle, which would be the sine of 4 degrees. And that would be the maximum speed this car can drive, since the engine only can put out 100 horsepower, 25% of that, which is usable. So 0.25 times 100 times 746 divided by 1500 divided by 9.8 and divided by the sine of 4 degrees, and we get 18.2 meters per second. In kilometers per hour, we want to multiply that times 3.6. I think that's correct. 3.6, uh, yep. All right. So if we multiply that times 3.6, that would be 65.5 kilometers per hour. And in miles per hour, we divide that by 1.609, and that would be 40.7 miles per hour. So that's, that explains why when you go drive up in the mountains, especially when you have a nice freeway going up the, up the mountains, the small cars with the small engines don't have a lot of power and they're not always able to drive as fast as they would like to going up those hills and they're actually forced to slow down because you know we can put the pedal to the metal so to speak and the car just cannot put out any more power to make it go any faster but that's how you solve a problem like that